back with the three dudes, the three amigos. Let's do a little three amigos toast. Three dudes, one cast. One more, we need three clinks. There we go. We got some real hot topics today for you. Real hot, quasi. Chill. So you guys better buckle up if you're not buckled up, because it's going to be a wild ride today. You should always buckle up. If you're listening while driving, please buckle up. Please yeah. do buckle up. Or if you're not listening. Uh, did anything happen that we need to talk about in emails or anything like this? Uh, there was that one really nice email. You remember? Uh, uh, vaguely. Let me let me pull it up here real quick. Yeah, pull it up. Let, let, me, let me let me you pull it up. Let me yeah. tell you about the gift situation, which I keep talking about. Uh, I haven't sent them yet. But Malone can confirm they are prepared and ready on my kitchen table. They're getting there. So They're all I gotta just do, lacking the plan. I'm I just kind of stuck in the mailing process, but it's happening. I'm not. I'm not pulling your leg. You got it. I got it. Tell uh, him. Got an email from Faraz from Canada. Hey Faraz. He. Hey. I hope I'm saying that right. Probably not. But he just had some really nice things to say about how he thought we did a, a great cast and he liked the seating positions and we we do a good. Uh, a good style, a nice conversational topic, mm -hmm. and how we ignore the camera, I guess, which is a Which is nice good. Thing. Yeah. He doesn't like the fact that we don't address the camera. Yeah. But... That camera? Yeah, yeah that's the one. Okay. But in general, we just want to say thank you. Those were very nice comments, and we were going to write you back, but we just figured it would be better to say something on the cast. Thanks so much. Uh, that's about it. We got one from Dane talking about the Pandora subject. He agrees with us a little bit. Mentioned that it's called the, the algorithm. It's called the human... Or the Music Genome Project, which... That's correct, yeah. I think that's what it originally was called before it was even called Pandora. It was just an experiment. Oh, it probably was, wow. yeah. That yeah. makes sense. So It's the one that recommends songs for you? Yeah. It, okay. Yeah, it did like detects music and then mm -hmm. recommends. So, yeah, so some nice feet, listener feedback. Uh, any good comments on the YouTube? I didn't really check that out that much. Uh, yeah, there were comments. Nothing yeah. too memorable to, you know... Yeah. Thank you very much for all the feedback, of course. Well, why don't we get into it? Let's get into it. We just came back from uh, eating some nice Indian food mm -hmm. at a place over here. And I've been thinking about this throughout my week, but whatever happened to good service at restaurants? What I'm saying is, I often have, and I made videos about, bad service at restaurants. And I don't very often get service that I can go, you know what, that was really great service. Today we did get excellent service, as a matter of fact, and I would say that was above average service for sure. But that's really rare. I feel like usually it's adequate or below average. Is it, I mean, it might be localized. Is it places I go are just bad? I don't know. I mean, I, I definitely have a bad experience on them, but I would say generally most of my dining experiences are... Excellent? No, I mean... Adequate. Somewhere about in between there. Uh -huh. yeah. Good. Yeah, I think like 80% are adequate. Mm -hmm. Maybe 15 to 18% are poor. And then what's that? Two to five are very good. Yeah. What's it? Okay. So, what does a server do, or what does the restaurant do that would make you say this was excellent service? He uh, fills up my drinks always without asking. Mm -hmm. uh, just gets them full. If my sprite is out of out of sprite, don't ask me if I need more sprite. Just assume I do and get it for me. They preemptively split the bill. Mm -hmm. um, they make recommendations that are good. They hear what I'm saying. Like I'm a vegetarian, right? So. When I start hinting that I'm a vegetarian by asking what things don't have meat or what sauces are made out of, they would pick up on that and go, you know what, I, I'm getting a vegetarian vibe out of you. Is that something you, that, I mean, they don't need to do that, but that's very, that's above and beyond. They can listen to what I'm saying and answer my questions. That's adequate. You know, but to like take it one step forward. Um, I mean, those are just some things. Being generally nice, catching, like whenever I feel like I need something, they're like there to go, like, is everything okay? These just they're, I mean, what, what I consider excellent, honestly, should be adequate. Like, we should bring the bar up a little bit. I don't think what I'm saying is too, they don't need to, like, you know, give me a blowjob or anything. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, it's not that serious. But just being assertive and being and anticipating my needs. <clears throat> Isn't this the, the beginning of uh, Reservoir Dogs, basically, right here? They're just talking about tipping. They're just okay, talking about tipping and whether so it's worth it. The blowjob comment sparked it. Yeah, yeah, how you get a... Because yeah, one guy won't tip. Yeah. But often, no, t today, we for, at Indian restaurants, I've noticed, which happens at Indian restaurants often, they just give you water without having to have you order it. You know, that, that's actually a nice tip. I do. I love that. Yeah. And a lot of... You know, I think it's, it's almost a greed issue where the gamble is we leave them thirsty and then they're more likely to order a drink. Whereas if you give them water, they're less likely to order a drink. And that's probably true. If the water wasn't there, I'd be more likely to order a Coke, probably. But I'm more pissed off. So that's a trade-off there. You know what I mean? I felt really great having the water right in front of me right then. I didn't have to take, give a drink order. I didn't have to do anything. It's just ready for me. Mm -hmm. It was great. Yeah. I like... Uh, 
this this I guess this is good service, but really it's always beneficial to the server. I like <clears throat> if you ask someone what's good here, I want them to just immediately have an answer like here, yeah, this this steak like it's excellent. You know, if they give me that, then I'll probably just order it because I believe them. Yeah, but they're like, oh, everything's good, or like, oh, or what they, do you what do you they, like? What do you it's the mood like, for? They start bullshitting. Yeah, I mean, it's too. like I like I think it's better for both of us. Uh, because then they can just get it over with. I mean, if they just really seem like they think the steak is great, like I'm probably just going to order it. Then they can just their job is much easier. They don't have to answer a bunch of questions. I like a couple of suggestions when, when you do that. You got to be a careful though. Good. Cause, a couple is good. Yeah, mm-hmm. you got to be careful though because if they just go, th- these are great. and It's the two most expensive things in the menu. You know, they're just trying to get you to buy expensive things so that you'll does that tip hap- percentage. Does that happen to you? Oh yeah, that's, you, that's never happened to me. Why well, are you aware of it? Yeah, it definitely would yeah. be. Yeah, well, I mean, what that, I, that is a, that is a thing that happens. So. My strategy is different. My strategy you is pick between two people. I pick two things, yeah. and then I make the waiter pick one of those two. Yeah. That's my strat. <laughs> so I pick two things that I think sound pretty good, and then I, which of these two is better? I usually do end up doing that, actually. It works really well. Check that out. And give us some feedback, and mm-hmm. how it goes. So. All right, well, let's get serious. Ready to get serious? I got a, <laughs> I got a hot topic, hot off the presses, and uh, Malone over here is real anxious to hear what I got to say about it. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Here's my proposal, okay? At birth, in hospitals... All children are sterilized with this kind of a magic injection. It makes so they are it cannot reproduce. Now the antidote for this injection is sold over the counter at every pharmacy, every drugstore. Costs about the same as Tylenol. Acts exactly the same as Tylenol. All you do is take a pill, and it it makes you back to normal again. That's the situation we're in. So, uh, what do you think about this uh, idea? Well, so first, of course, this is none of these solutions actually exist for. As far as this you know. is, yes, but they're, they're, they're not invented by it yet. Um, well, I mean, actually, I mean, the, in some ways, there's some things like this. I talked to our boy JB about this, our boy John, John B. Okay, you brought this up. Okay. Yeah, and he said there actually is uh, this serum they can inject into into a, a boys that makes their sperm like not work, <clears throat> but then they have another injection which reverses it, and it's like very safe and it works. Uh, it's you know experimental or whatever. They're not. There's not much funny in it, but there is something like this. It's not ridiculous what I'm saying to have something like this. But the idea, I mean, the point of it is to stop unexpected pregnancy. This is this will eliminate unexpected pregnancy among children that are born in hospitals in America. I, I, I mean, is it a good idea? Mm-hmm. I I guess <clears throat> yes. In a perfect situation where it works perfectly, it's perfectly reversible. There's no side effects. Then yeah, it's a good idea. Yep. But then there's <clears throat> so many implications to it, I guess, moral and uh, philosophical. Which ones? Um, well, the quandary of choice, I guess. I mean, at what point? I mean, at what point are these people gonna be able to buy this this pill? And you have to buy it. Let's say right. anytime. It's ca- yeah, it's cheap though. You're 12. You want to buy it? Yeah, you buy it. Can a 12-year-old buy Tylenol? I I think so. Yeah. Okay, then they can buy it. Yep, a 12-year-old can definitely buy this. I'm completely against this in every way. I think it's a Tell perverse it. perverse idea. Tell me some more about it. I think that your right to reproduce is a fundamental human right, and you're taking this away from everybody immediately, and then you're putting... You, they can buy this back from some entity, the government, that you so so trust so much, you want them to control the price and the availability and who produces this drug. Uh, so for one, philosophically, I think it's totally perverse and wrong. Um, logistically and financially, I mean, think of the cost. I mean, every single person who's born, you sterilize everyone. For one, you develop some magic drug that you can undo. Well, don't worry about the development. That's obviously a fantasy. Okay, okay. but then think of, I mean, you need to give everybody this sterilization, and then you also need to stock and manufacture and sell the antidote Mm -hmm. later. Yeah. It's like just a giant, it's a, it would be a huge cost. Is it a greater cost than all the unexpected pregnancies that take place in America? Well, I mean, here's the thing. It's a, it's, not a bad like solution. I mean, there's there's an issue. Here's a solution. Yeah. But it's such a pipe dream, and it's so so far <clears throat> out of the realm of anything real. That I, I mean, as far like, what do you mean, like, like? All right. Well, okay. What about all the people who are against, you know, uh, medicine or not medicine, but you know, like altering their body or chemicals or or, or genetic genetically grown food? There's lots of people who have issues with this kind of stuff, right? Oh, they have issues. Or just birth control in general. Yeah. I mean, many religious people they got have issues. A, for sure. Yeah. I mean, this would be a, this would be a state thing. Like in China, you can have one child. In America, you're sterilized at birth, and you can take an antidote whenever you're ready. Yeah, this is. It's, I think it's perverse. Why? What does this word perverse? Because I think, uh, like I said, your a fundamental human right is the right to reproduce, and then you're taking that away from everyone. 
the government is taking that away from everyone. What really gets other than your life or your freedom well, and things? I mean, I mean are you that's really pretty bad. You're, are you really taking it away if everybody? It's temporary. Yeah, you're it's taking temporary. It away. You're, 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 you're sterilizing everyone. It's an over the counter solution. If, it's really if, in this, if in this perfect world you can just literally go to the store and buy it, you're, you're, you're creating what regulations you on it. But that happens all the time with fundamental rights. Yes. You know, that's not like the freedom of speech is a fundamental right, but that doesn't mean there aren't regulations and restrictions on it. There you go. Right? Yes, but you don't need your your right is given to you first you don't need to go pay to stand on the street corner and yell your views is it free it's free to go yell on the no, street I mean, corner free. antidote yeah i was thinking it's 250 <laughs> you pay cost you pay cost 250 my, my, it's very affordable it's very affordable there's probably some cost to stocking it but it's a very affordable solution the thing is the the cost that is associated with all the illegitimate children that take place in america that would be completely eliminated there would be no such thing as unexpected pregnancy anymore and even if the boy goes, I'm going to get this, I'm going to knock this girl up. I'm going to take the end of it on secret. She's still taking it or not taking it. So she's still, she still won't have to give birth. So you need both people to, yeah, it takes take, two take to give, to give birth. And then a rape baby will never happen. Uh, the, the high school kids can have all the sex they want. They'll never be a, a teen mom. And all the, like the crack babies and stuff that takes place that, you know, have no future that are just in the, in the, in the alleyways won't happen anymore. I mean, it's, it's great. I, I, in a perfect world it makes sense I mean, yeah. it, it, it makes sense as a solution to a lot of problems of overcrowding and overpopulation and all these issues yeah it's just like again I, it's so far away from anything that would ever actually happen because there's so many arguments so you'd vote you would vote no this vote is up for it's up for it's right now it's a, we're <clears throat> voting on it right now I vote no because I don't like what it portends I don't like what, what it could lead to and I don't like if in that level of control over my body that my children, if you know, if I had children, things about them could be controlled before they're even born. Then that scares me. So yeah, maybe I agree with this, but what if there's one I don't agree with? You know, like the next step in this, and everybody says, "Oh, it's a great idea." Uh, it, it takes away just so much. I I don't know. It scares me. That's a real thing. It scares me. Mm -hmm. The the implications scare me more than the actual issue itself. Yeah, yeah you, you are obviously say no. Yeah, definitely. But also the implications of it. Imagine. Sometime in the future, somebody wants somebody in power wants to withhold this antidote, antidote from people. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, really, sure. that's like the future well, of the yeah, human race potentially. That situation, uh, though, is like, what if somebody in power in the future wants to sterilize everybody at birth? I mean, it's not <clears> a different. <throat> what if you're giving them a vector? You're giving them an easy way of. Oh, here, all these drug companies need to make the antidote. Well, you know, it's it's an easier way. It's easier than saying I'm going to start sterilizing everyone. Much easier. You're just yeah, withholding I, something that's produced. The, the, the ease of like the ease <clears throat> physically of withholding that is the, the complication with a world leader doing that is going to be like political. Would you say like in China, for example, the government does dictate how many kids you can have? Yeah, they're but, doing that, but not by altering the human chemistry. No, they're doing mind. it. They're doing it in a different way. But yeah. like the point is, like if a dictator wants to do something like that, they can do something like that. I'm not giving <clears throat> them the keys to this. They can just say, "Oh, you guess what? You can't have kids anymore." All kids will be thrown in an incinerator in the hospitals. You know, if some maniac does wants to do that, it, that's not really like. Well, okay, let, no, no, forget, forget that situation. Let's say we let's forget we it. do it. We want to do it. Yeah. What's this, I mean, we do uh, vaccinations, right? Yeah. Great, but a lot of but then people start building immunities and the the diseases start mutating. The the risk of what if our bodies start adapting over you know generations because now everybody who has a child has this yeah. initial thing in them got to keep at it i it's just the risk <clears throat> there's there's so much risk again it's just in a in a perfect bubble of here's a snapshot everything's perfect do you like it well yeah i like it it's it sounds good even in a perfect world one doesn't like it i think it's a fundamental human right the, the that shouldn't be taken away by the government at birth the problem is there's there is no perfect world or something like this. You know what I mean? It's just... What if they give you the antidote right there, right then? Still no. You're still... They're still... They're taking away your... But you get... The, you have the antidote. What if you lose it? Then you get another one. What if they run out? What They'll if... They'll make some more. I mean, yeah, I mean... It's... I mean, uh... Yeah. Okay, how about... No. How about it sterilizes <clears throat> you, automatically wears off in 16 years? So it would just prevent really early pregnancies like that? Yeah, maybe... Still... Maybe, maybe 18 years. Maybe 18 years. So 16. I don't know. 
Let's call it 18. <clears throat> Let's call it 18. That's a better, better age. Automatically wears off at 18. It, it's an isotope. The, the half-life of the molecules, whatever, whatever, it molecularly dissolves in 18 years. I, I, no cost nothing, in the Nothing changes for me because I still think it's just a too scary idea. I don't want to mess How about for an alarm? Did that change it for you? Still no. no. Still no? No. Because you should have the right to have birth at 17 if you want. Because it's fundamental? You're making a moral argument. I mean, that makes sense. I'm not saying that's bad, but... Kind of. That's yeah, what, I mean, that's what I, we are I guess kind of, yeah. Currently, if I want to have a baby at 16, I can do it. Yeah. And if I, if no girl will do it to me, I can rape that girl and do it anyway. Right now is what's going on. You heard on. it here first. <laughs> if, uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's like if I'm dead set at 16 to give birth to a child. Well, you know, you know, she can do some things about that as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, she can. Yeah. But I mean, this would be better than that, you know. Yeah. Well, why don't you give me a vote? Give me a vote. This is, you know, I'm not, I don't have it in my basement or anything. No. I'm just saying this. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how you, can we well, stop. Have you tried anything? Like, how can we stop? <laughs> unexp- I've injected all kinds of stuff. <laughs> how can we stop unexpected pregnancy? And this seems to me like a very nice solution. It's elegant and it works. And uh, <laughs> in your made up perfect world, <laughs> yeah, I guess it, does. it works. Well, it works because, yeah. I mean, the, the, you, you guys are both thinking up scenarios where people are going to take the antidote. Well, you're think I don't know. Well, you're thinking that it's going to give you infections and shit. Not even like it, that's just one of the small things. My biggest issue is okay. Let's let's say we do this and it's a great success. Mm-hmm. Then somebody, I mean, the government, let's say the the Senate yeah. goes, hey, holy shit, you know what? Uh, I don't like this. You know, I don't like how people are born and can do this. And then they take a vote, and now they find a way to develop the serum, alter it. To everybody's born, it's injected. So everybody, everybody's born white, for example. Why not? I mean, it's it's crazy, but like, is you know, let's say there's a, a racist Senate or whatever, some sure. state maybe. Yeah. And they say everybody's born white. I mean, that's terrifying. That's a that's a scary. Now let me let's you know, now. The, and I hate the slippery slope argument. Now but, you got me thinking though. Yeah. What if there was an injection? Everybody was injected at birth. Turn everybody brown. Just the mix. Just an absolute mix of all the races. Everybody becomes brown starting like 2015. Every baby from now on is the same color brown. Good? I, um, I, same reasons. Better? Just, there's it's no... very weird. What's the uh, point? They make, get rid of black people and Asian people and Indians and whites. And white just people. The same people. <clears throat> yeah. And I whites. Yeah, beautiful yeah. melting pot. Yeah, just be one color. Everybody be caramel. I mean, and that's the idea it. is that eventually people will get there anyway. <laughs> eventually, sure. Yeah. yeah, the thing is like I feel like no matter what the difference is, there's always going to be... There's like some level of racism and xenophobia and in or perceived racism. Yeah. No matter how how much everyone looks the same, even, there's always going to be something. Like you know yeah. what I mean? Like I think even mm-hmm. if you did that, it would just be like, oh, you're they from will, here, you're from there, some kind of or you talk like this, yeah. or you have, or your just some, or your nose yeah. is just slightly different. Like I feel like it's the same way with people. Yeah, I think that every person has a a standard level of how much they will complain regardless of what situation their life is in. So if they get if they get a good job and they're doing great, they're going to complain just as much as if they're really poor. I think everyone's just stuck complaining exactly how much they will regardless of their life situation. I think it's kind of similar with the racism, even right. if you look the same. What at-birth injection can I get you to agree on? <laughs> Vaccinations for diseases that are harmful to uh, the like population is large. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. All right, well, hope you enjoyed that. That was a, was a hot topic. Mm. I like that one. I'm still for it. I vote, I'll vote yes <laughs> if this ever comes up. Now, yeah. let's move right in to the next one, huh? Now, yeah. talking about voting yes, what if this happens, right? What if we get rid of the representative system in America? Right now, we vote representatives in. The representatives vote in our, in our behalf mm-hmm. based on you know, democracy. They voted. What if we cut the middleman and we all just vote on everything? So what would happen is uh, there'd be a website like, you know, votenow.gov or whatever the hell. And then every vote in your state or whatever small, whatever scale we decide, you know, maybe it's county, state, is just up to you. And you vote yes or no on it. You submit. There's a deadline. And you get like an app. And the app texts you and says, there's a new bill just proposed. Go check it out here. And you click it. You read the bill. It just says sterilize all children. Yes, no. Yes or no. just click yes. click yes or no. So you can reply via text. You know, you know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe you got. You actually got to go to the website so they can track your. You know, you got to log in with your social security number so that you can only vote once. Whatever, whatever. We can. I mean, we can figure this out as far as how to vote. We can definitely do it. You know. So that's it. I mean, we just we go to direct democracy. We we stop having representatives. Yeah. So first, when when you brought this topic up to me, I was quite against it. I'm coming around a bit as I think about it more. Mm-hmm. However, my main 
So I, I did a little bit of research on this topic. Oh, wow. So this your proposal is direct democracy, they call it, where the people direct vote democracy. on everything. This happens a lot in many states, a ballot initiative, usually. We, we currently it. have a representative democracy. Yeah, I, mean, I think most states are uh, as well. Where So you elect a senator or a representative and they vote on the issues. And uh, the, the founders of the country, when they talked about this, they said they wanted to prevent the tyranny of the masses. Which were, or the tyranny of the majority, I think it was called. So, like, if 55% of the, the country, you know, wants some extreme, maybe, like, racist thing, just to make an extreme example, okay. they can just vote on it, and then, you know, bam, if you're Jewish, you can't be employed, except in a couple sectors or something like that. Sure. Is Adams, did you want to say that? I'm not sure. I, yeah, I, don't, I just looked at the Wikipedia page, but that's, you know, according to the Wikipedia thing, that was kind of their thinking, is that it would create more stability. Sure. I think it would does too, and I like professional politicians whose job is actually to, in theory, talk with all the people who care about whatever issue is being presented, talk with voters, and in theory be better informed than hopefully most of your average Joe Blow who's going to be voting on things. So I like that. However, the more I think about it, it's it's interesting. They, we do it a lot, you know. Like you have to you vote on a ballot initiative or whatever. I know California has a whole lot of them. Minnesota doesn't mm-hmm. have so many, but. What do you think about that, Yuri? I, I don't like it. I think that there's maybe the system's not perfect now, but not everybody's gonna. I mean, you you're one who always says you think most people are probably stupid. Yeah, most people are dumber than you. Yep. Now, what if all those dumb people are controlling your life? Well, if they're the majority of people, then the law should represent them more than me. I think now, that'd be fair. The majority in America used to love slavery. Slavery That's, was great. To a point, right? So if, if we had the system, slavery would still be a thing. Racism, well, well I mean, not the racism now, gone, but, but racist laws and practices would still be prevalent. But race and representatives could still exist. That would, I mean, essentially the same thing could happen, representatives. Well, no. You I'm, just get the representative that's, that, that wants slavery to be enacted, and then he'll still do it. Right? If, like... Virginia is a slave state and they have representatives they're voting on and one representative in Virginia is like, I'm going to abolish slavery. They're not going to vote that guy in. They're well, going to vote in the guys that say, we're going to maintain slavery. If there's 10 people yeah, and they're educated, representing uh, a, a different, you know, s- slots of the American culture, then you, you have a higher chance of getting better policies passed. Whereas if you've just got the, you know, the whole American culture... There's a huge majority, right? Well, okay, let's say this. Maybe this is a better way. Let's say there's 10 people okay. voting. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say three of them are, three or four of them are black. Let's say three of them. Okay. Okay? Those three people have a much larger voice than the percentage of blacks in America, possibly, if the percentage is like 10 or 15 or 20%. Who are these 10? These are representatives? Yeah, let's just say they're representatives. How do they get voted in? By. Okay. Help me. Well,. This, what you're saying is not going to work because yeah. because a representative <laughs> democracy is representative of the population. So you're not going to like if half the population is racist, that half will still vote in racist politicians who maintain the racist laws. the 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 issue that I'm solving here, in the, with this with the direct, is right now me. I'm I'm libertarian. Okay, which means essentially I 50 percent agree with Republicans and I 50 percent agree with liberals. So when it comes to vote on a representative, I can't ever be represented correctly. There's a, let's say there's a state. Okay. Okay. The state is 30% black. Okay. okay. Now, if they just had an election within the state, that 30% of black people are always going to lose in votes. Sure. All right. Now, they break it up into districts, and the districts are allotted with an equal amount of African Americans in each district, right? Or some districts have more African Americans to create a majority based on that area. So now, at least that district can be represented with a black vote whereas if it because it's a representative out of that district okay. versus if it was just a whole section voting then that section would always lose so why don't we break it up into districts then direct democracy <clears throat> the districts that's kind of what we have except we have representatives okay yeah because yeah, the yeah. person still they so could just go rogue and in start my voting case, let's say I, something weird. today I really yeah. care deeply about gay marriage yeah. that's my that's my thing right now we have an election today well, I will vote for the – I got two representatives. I got the liberal who is going to for sure do it, but he's going to trash our taxes and our economy in my mind. Then we have the Republican who's going to maintain our economy but hates gay marriage. Now I got to vote. 
well, okay, now today I'm feeling like I really I have a new gay best friend who I really like, so I want to help him out. So the, today I'm going to vote for the liberal guy. And now for the next four years, I got this guy in there who I only agree with 50% of the time. And he's voting against me the other half of the time. Whereas instead, we get just a law. Gay marriage, yes or no? I say, yes. Then we get another law. Increase taxes and help our teachers. I say, no. You know what I mean? That's that's the That would be better mm-hmm. for me. I would get 100% representation of myself mm-hmm. instead of just picking you know half and half. If you're like hardcore in one direction, then you really don't care, I guess. But I mean, still, I, you should care. My, my concern there is that let's say that you're... You might, in this issue, you might be, you're the minority view there, right? Those are great things, possibly, you know. Where? Gay marriage? Yeah. Let's say you're the minority Let's view. say I'm the minority yeah. view. Okay. Well, you're going to lose. You're probably going to lose most of the time. But that, the representative is going to lose most of the time then, too. No, because the representative is somebody who's ho- you're kind of hoping will be above, like, they'll do what's best for the nation. The best for, like, that's the whole goal of this, is you're like somebody who's doing the education, mm-hmm. doing the research, doing the thought process. Mm-hmm. Yes. And they're doing what's better. They're, doing, they're going above and beyond. And sure, it's not perfect, and like, well, that's what we have. I'm just saying that at least now there's that, that hope. If you get rid of that hope, all you have is the risk of this tyranny of the masses, like, like what Malone was saying. I don't yeah. see this tyranny thing happening here. I don't see it. I think it's know, just as tyrannous to represent yourself with the guy who's just as tyrannous as you. Another aspect that I see is that it seems uh, if everybody direct democracy voted on all the issues, yep, it would just it would make for a, like just extreme advertising. I feel like it would really like the the messages and trying to get somebody to vote for what is. Well, Inevitably, here, always a very complex issue. Like you here's, know, here's my other question: Is who's proposing the legislation? Whoever yeah. does it now. Who does it now? But now it's the representatives. representatives. Oh, so we need someone. We need, so we need like. Well, okay. So we. I. I don't know who. I don't. I have no idea how that works actually. Well, that's the point. It's so like, some it, dude so sitting there in a room is like, I have an idea for a bill. Yeah. And then he writes well, it. He's got a whole. He's got a whole team of people, a whole staff and who they, does they this. They carefully craft the language to make sure that it's written properly. Okay. You've seen House of Cards, right? Yeah, I've seen House of Cards. This is what yeah. got me, got well, me there's, hating, there's, hating politics. Yeah, well, there's scenes in there where they actually are doing like real politics. They're, <clears throat> they're in a room and they're like, well, I don't want this, this sentence. Well, then the here. people would. The people would come up. There would be a, 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 um, a guy who's a law writer, a, a lawyer type dude, a polit- political lawyer. So one guy controls everything that's well, proposed be to the people. One guy per district. Now, let's say that this one guy okay. is just – hates – you know, like hates – Anything. Let's say he's he's. Let's say he's, it's not, one, it's not one guy. I don't like. Okay. I don't want to even. It's yeah. not one guy. It's it's however many guys we decide. So per. How do they get decided? Per a hundred thousand people, it's it's a guy. Um, how's he get decided? <laughs> he's an educated political guy. How do you? What, what do you? What do you? Uh, how do you get into politics? My point is, you, you're still ending up represented because these people, people are now you. controlling what laws are before the people. You know what I'm saying? So if I, it, well, that, that's not all representatives write laws though, right? Only some of them. Yeah, do. they, they all write sure laws. They, yeah, they probably can, all do. I think maybe. All right, well, all then of them they write the laws. Then that's fine. They can write the laws. But what's the point from? They don't the vote. They just write them. And they just vote. They, they so they're like marketers. They write the laws and they make a bunch of. Think of okay. It's all pre- Presidential campaign season. You see ads all the time. Just the worst ads, nonstop. You constantly see them. If you were voting on everything nonstop, that's all you would see. Is you'd see this ad for this bill, this ad for that bill, just fucking nonstop bullshit. And you'd never act. It would be just as low a level of actual discussion and discourse as on, you get for those presidential ads, where they're just attacking like, this I, or that. I just don't have the the time to research every bill. Yeah, that comes I don't want to research it. I want to yeah. hire. I want to elect some person I think is smart who will actually could, go I and reasonably sit. represent my views. And now in here's theory. here's what I don't like. Okay, here's what I don't like. First, yeah. a professional politician, in my mind, cannot be objective. He has a conflict of interest <clears throat> that's clear for him to maintain his position while. Doing his duty. Agreed. There, are, there are issues with the system. I'm yeah. not saying the system. Well, this is that's one big issue. You're saying I want a professional politician who's educated, and I'm saying I don't want one who wants to keep his job all the time. Who's like, well, these guys give me a lot of money, so I'm not going to vote against them. You know what I mean? So I'm going to vote or whatever they say because they keep me in office. To me, so the, then, the solution isn't there's an issue with the system. Let's fuck get rid of the system completely. No, the system. We're not getting. I mean, direct well, democracy is a system. That that should work fine. I don't I don't see problems with that right there, now. There there are middle grounds between what you're saying. There's proportional democracies where there, there's different. Uh, like for example, I think in Germany they have like a like a board basically, and different factions get. It's not a two party system. There's different parties. Yeah, they got a lot of parties. System. Yeah, but each, those parties represent more <coughs> views than just. I would love to have more yeah, parties. Yeah, I like that. That's like that. I think is a mm-hmm. great system. Well, yeah. You know, sure, but I mean that's that's just as revolutionary as what I'm proposing. That's not a middle ground at all. 
to take two systems and make eight? No nations have direct democracies. Well, there's one state or whatever, a province in Switzerland that actually does direct oh, democracy. How big, are, how big are they? I think it's very small, and I again, I just looked at the Wikipedia That's the about problem. this. You can't do it with a mass group like, no, here's, like, like a huge country. Here, I have an improvement. Here's, what I, here's where I think... I think something like this could fit, and I think... I think it should. I think uh, perhaps it could be another, some other sort of a branch of government, you know? So in the federal government, there's the judicial, the legislative, and the executive. They kind of check each other. I think perhaps it would be interesting to see, maybe like at a state level or something, to add this component in as another check on one or other of them. You know, it's not replace, however, just to have some other, you know, like the president has the veto power over bills in the Senate. And blah blah, you know those other the cycle of power. So what are you saying? I'm saying I think this would be interesting a direct like a direct democracy branch of government that has some check. Like say they can veto, if they get two thirds, they can veto a law coming from the legislature, or they can veto something that the governor yeah, does, like or they can propose this like as some other kind of a check. I don't. I like professional politicians, like uh, representatives and senators, because. Their job is to make laws and to understand the different points of view of people who want to change or make new laws. And I, like, I think that's very, I think that's useful. Part, part of the nice thing about having people be elected is there's a system of checks and balances. You know, the, right now, anything that, that's sweeping the nation, some craze or some rage, and people aren't thinking clearly about it, and a bill gets put forward quickly for it, you know what I mean? <clears throat> then they do it. There's no, there's no, checks on it. People can just do whatever the fuck they want and there's nothing stopping them from doing it. And if what they want to do is just fucking bad shit insane, then we're all screwed for it. I mean, I guess I gotta... I don't see that as not happening anyway. Like, you know, we've passed some bad shit bills. Patriot Act, right? Now. We've passed... I mean, we... Yeah, I mean... She like that gets passed anyway, so I don't, like... If something sweeps the nation, it'll affect the politicians just okay, like it affects 9-11 them. happens. Yeah. And there's a huge outcry to deport all Muslim people. Okay. And then somehow that bill comes out, mm -hmm. and then the nation's just furious. They vote yes There's, or no, and they vote yes, and yeah. then that's a bad bill. Yeah, that wouldn't happen in what we I have mean, now. But I, it's, it, could you not see that happening after nine eleven? And, and I, I can see that happening, but if that's how the if that's how the population feels as a country, then then why shouldn't that happen? Because, because there's there's right and wrong, and just because people want something doesn't make it right. Yeah, and the the immediate check on the major what the majority of people think I think is a way to make less stable government and laws I think it makes it more unstable and there's more opportunity for crazy things like that I like the kind of the slow the more slowness of not being able to immediately vote yeah on maybe that. there's something there maybe interesting there idea though now somebody else proposed an idea to me where politicians are elected like jury members and they serve a. This one is more. They serve a you know X amount of months term. You mean like so? Just every random person can just go and they would be a politician. Yes. So you get a letter in the mail <laughs> says it's your your turn to serve your country. You are now representative of Minnesota. <laughs> you have the press conference. <laughs> yeah. Your family's up there. The, the whole deal. So you get like a two year term, and uh, you you know, and your job has to allow for you to be gone for two years, and you get paid and everything, but you are just on 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 the the bench. <laughs> For the next two years, <laughs> and it's random, just like what jury is, and it's rep it would be representative of your local area because it's 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 a random sample of the people who live there. So if it's thirty percent, you know, whatever, then thirty percent of those totally people. random. Yeah, it's totally random. So you'd feel comfortable with anybody you know possibly being in charge of your life through the government. I mean, it's it, there'd be more than one person, but it'd be you know whatever the amount of representatives we are. You are just any guy who you know or any group of people from your thing. I mean, that scares me too. Hate it. I think that's a you know, good solution too. And then you have two years in there, so you'd have so time. No, Your no, full-time job there's is... There's no test or like education levels no. or like just totally random. Well, like age would be a, a limit, yeah. So you get, and you'd yeah. be a citizen. And... No, no, no. Yeah. No. That, that would be... That's a good... That's a great idea. So, what, I mean, let's just take another example. I mean, okay, uh, what if you just draft people to be a police person, policeman, police officer? You're fine with that? Just random Joe? Just, hey, you're a police officer for six months? No, because policemen aren't representative of the population. They have very specific skills. Think, right, but I they have, like, a, they have a job, which is a specific and requires training and knowledge, like making laws and drafting laws and doing that. Like, I feel like as you don't give a shit about things being done right or, like, all you care about right now is that there is representation. Yeah. And, like, okay, great. We have representation and the whole everything falls apart because... Because why? These people are stu Who knows? People are stupid. 
You know, you got idiots doing this or like a, somebody has a bad day and then everybody just goes in and says, fuck it. And there's no checks or balances. There's, no, there's nothing to keep people from saying, fuck it, because they're gone in six months and it's all random anyway. You know what I mean? Like, well, I mean, I think people will take it pretty seriously when they're... I, I don't know why you think Would they? That. Well, why? why can stupid people be a jury duty and to determine if somebody lives or dies? Can a stupid idiot just well, there's, determine there's, that guy's going to be executed? Yes, but there's checks and balances there because well, okay, the, the lawyers have have uh, preemptory challenges where they can say, this guy's an idiot. I don't want him on the jury. Get him off. And the judge goes, well, this guy's a racist. He can't rule unbiased. Okay. So get him out. Well, still, I mean, if you get a, you can get a stupid person on the jury and he can make serious decisions to implicate a person's life. It's a random. Why is that okay? Why why they should make the jury? Then you have there's to be educated. Jury, there's a jury because that's, selection process. I mean, that's the whole point of the process. Well, I mean, they can make a process similar to that here, then I guess. But the idea being that there's no there's no such thing as a career politician. You you like there's nothing in it for you to maintain your position. Well, yeah, have so a, there's a no process, conflict uh, there. If, if I'm okay with the process, then I'm okay. With I mean, there's be then. some process, but I don't want to like to say that you have to be educated first. That immediately destroys any kind of representation. Because people who are educated are much more likely to be a certain way than a different way, right? I just for a fun fact, maybe let's let's go on a, a random YouTube video, a Beyonce video. <laughs> okay, let's go on a Beyonce video and just look at ten comments. And just think that ten <laughs> that is these a, that's ten not people, a, that's not a, that's these not a ten fair people, thing at all. these ten people could be running a government. <laughs> that, those ten people aren't like if you take all the YouTube comments. And pick out the all the worst ones. That's not going to be representative of the population by any means. Doesn't matter. You got you got these ten random people. Well, sure, there's they, ten random people. These ten are... random people could could decide a really important piece of legislation. They're just they happen to be there one day. Yeah, well, you know, and they're the whatever. Let's say there's fifty people and twenty six of them are these these weird. That would be creepy. a bad. That would be a bad draw. Yeah, that would be a bad draw. It could happen. But you know what? The law <laughs> they pass is no no more violent anything. No more violent media. You can't have anything violent. Those anymore. guys are gonna pass that law. Let's just say. Let's just say it's something you love. You nothing. No. Any, everything has to be G rated from now on. Look. Then. The but next, hey, they, then they decided the that's, next that's batch the has to, to overturn that shit. But what if they make? What if they change that? What if they actually change the all the laws? Wait. And so say then you got. So then you got forever? laws changing every six. They can't months. change that law. You got laws changing every six months based on how <laughs> every every is, every two years. Yeah. It's insane. This average, isn't an insanity at all. Joe. This is one hundred percent average Joe. The the direct democracy one. I won't call that insane. Now why is that's that insane? Most that's, people that's, are dumb, so that, then most people will be stupid voting. But at least it takes some kind of a what. I yeah. think they're both. I think they're both. Insane. I guess yeah. The 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 random juror. Legislators. The, de- the direct democracy thing only isn't insane because there's a, a history for it. But in such a giant like group, a, a, a nation as big as ours, it's unreasonable, it's impractical, and I just think it's there's too much risk there. Hmm. Well, you better tell us what you think. Yeah. I, I think, think uh, you, we have a good uh, – I've noticed from the comments a good kind of uh, libertarian views I see in, in the YouTube. So I, I think – I'm hoping some of them will weigh in on that's some his, of these sort of that's things. That's crazy libertarian, here. and so yeah. people flock to his views. <laughs> the, the right views, so they're right to do that. Okay, you know what we haven't talked about in a while? Ebola. We have not talked about mm-hmm. Ebola. You know why? Because the country didn't die of Ebola. We didn't die of Ebola. I was right. Hey, you know what? It's bittersweet for me to admit that I was wrong in this yeah. case, but, but you're probably I'm happy feel, we yeah. don't all have Ebola. If I remember right from episode, what was it, 12? 14, 10 maybe? I, I believe you owe uh, Yuri one or two dollars. Didn't you make a thousand to one bet? Did you? I think I do owe you I money. Think, I think that's right. I remember that episode. I owe you two dollars. He's yeah. wearing his tracksuit, his big old chain. Yeah. But he had me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> You're right. Ebola <laughs> yeah. is, didn't, didn't sweep America. It is yeah. still around in Africa. It still exists. However, it's... it's that, wasn't the, that wasn't your issue. My when, issue was that America would get would catch it. Yeah. And it'd be a serious yeah. issue. Yeah. Unless everyone's... You wanted everyone to like stop flying, stop using the subway, and stop... Basically doing everything mm-hmm. to, to make sure they didn't just stop get flying, it. man. You can do the rest of the stuff. Just stop flying. You can yeah. do the rest of the stuff. Just don't ever leave the country. Quarantine don't. yourself. Yes. In the nation. I think that would have been prudent at the time, yeah. but I'm happy despite <clears throat> the risks we took <clears throat> that we didn't all get infected with Ebola. So there you go. I love how anytime there's like a, a problem, crisis solution is all or nothing. It's it's always like let's get rid of this. Let's stop doing this completely. <clears throat> you know. It seems like the safest way to go for me. <laughs> Cavities are a thing. Let's get rid of sugar. Completely. Let's get rid of teeth. Let's get rid of teeth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're right. Remo- you're right. I didn't go far enough. Remove children's Leave teeth. Sure. I didn't go far enough for a crazy as <laughs> Remove <laughs> children's teeth. Everything's liquid. Oh, God. So, uh, Yuri, what do we got here about hobbies? Hmm? Uh, so, do you ever feel like this? Where, like, I, I get... Like, when I have free time, sometimes I get stressed by my free time. 
So what I mean by that is there's so many things I want to do within that period. So I get home, let's say, at 5.30 one day, and I've got maybe five hours of time before I, I probably need to start getting, you know, going to bed. And I'm like, fuck, what do I want to do in these five hours? Should I watch a movie? Oh, okay, what movie should I watch? Okay, I'll sit here for half an hour going through Netflix. What movie am I going to watch? Well, fuck, now I've wasted a half hour. Should I watch a movie now? Maybe I should play a game instead. Well, if I really start a game now, it's... It stresses me out. And then what happens? You end up doing nothing? Most, a lot of times, yeah. <clears throat> That's the, that is the, the, you're paralyzed by your choices. Exactly. I do, I absolutely know what you're saying. And I, for me, it's, you know, I got, I make my Nintendo videos. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to play my games. I'm trying to make other videos. I'm trying to watch YouTube videos. And there's always new content coming out it's, that I want to experience. It's crazy, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We need a way to consume content better. I can relate. I can relate to what you say too. We're often exactly the same thing. I'm like, oh, I want you know, I want to play yeah. the piano. Like I got, I got some other cool thing I want to do. My, and I end up just sitting there doing nothing, and it's like oh, I wasted all this time. Like now, when I put this topic on here, I actually, this is the extent of what I had. But at this recent week, my girlfriend Chloe and I tried are trying to start this new thing where we sort of pre-plan our week a little bit when it comes mm-hmm. to like activities. Interesting. So like on the other night, like I think it was. Wednesday was when I kind of started this idea and I, I came home and I thought of it. And I was like, what if to, like, tomorrow, let's say, tomorrow's a movie night. We're going to watch a movie and we're going to pre-select three movies right now, like three different varieties. So we very, have a, very clever. a limited selection to choose from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is what we're doing tomorrow, <clears throat> you know? And that way tomorrow when we get there, we're not like, ah, oh, like, do we still want to watch a movie? What do you want to do? We go for around for a while. It's like a, it's like a task, you know? It's like what we're going to do. But we've got some room there to wiggle in case we're not perfectly in the mood. And it, we did it. And it was stress-free. It was really fun. <clears throat> We didn't do that thing. We're like, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. What are you in the mood for? You know? Mm-hmm. That's another thing I always have. Mm-hmm. You want to get a, pick a time when you're active and then map your week out. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's a good idea. That'd be, yeah. yeah. Or I feel like that would work well with restaurants. Especially with like uh, back, you know, when we had, when I was single and just had a bunch of dudes hanging out, mm-hmm. we'd always be going out to eat and like we'd spend a long time figuring out where. Like, where should we go? Like, I don't know. I'll look it up. Like, if we just had a list, like, restaurants to go to, yep. just bam, next one on the list. Just and then go every to time it. you go, you, you get a plus one or a minus one. Yeah, you don't even waste your time. And then yeah. you can vote, vote them around. That's a good it, idea, man. And it's That's like, how it's a pro yeah. tip. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I, yeah, I hope so. I, I, we just started, so I want to see how it works out. But, you know, it's almost like the idea of date night, but extend it out through your life. <clears> so, <throat> like, one night, like, one night next week is going to be a game night for me. And I'm just going to come home and I'm just going to game hard. And mm. we've already, like, I've already said, Chloe, you know, figure out a thing you want to do. What are you playing that night? I don't know. I haven't decided that yet. We, come you know, on, plan that shit I'm out, gonna, man. You're going to be sitting in your game. No, I will. I will. Around. I'm going to plan it out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. got some ideas I'm working through right now. But, you know what I mean? So it's going to kind of take away some of that mm. stress of when I get there by trying to do it ahead of time when, like you said, I'm active or, you know, feeling more alert or, like, really thinking good about idea it. man i might it, even try that you know it's yeah. kind of like uh it's kind of just like having a general free time to-do list it, it is and it's not a crazy it's not a mind-blowing concept people do this yeah, with stuff yeah. in their life all the time yeah. but for whatever reason i've never applied it to my free time you yeah. know you gotta you make use of that time it's, it's valuable you yeah gotta, you gotta be disciplined in your free time i think it, you, it, it looks like you do and it's weird the more than anything i think even if i end up spending the same amount of time doing the things i like the fact that i've kind of planned it makes me less stressed about whether I've fulfilled that time properly. Do you know hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Because you're filling out tasks you made for yourself. Yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah. I like so that. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of keep, I'll kind of keep, sorry. Hold on. So we got, we got a zoo in here. Yeah. Got animals everywhere. Criminals. What are they doing? <laughs> you just ran a circle <laughs> on the Sorry, table. guys. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of keep people updated over the next week or two. Hey, how, I how expect to be updated. Yeah. On how this is going. So, yeah. I'll let you know and that's maybe a pro tip of the week. I like that. Mm-hmm. Nice tip, man. So uh, Yuri's still here. Yuri's on, on point. Audiobooks. Talk, speaking of oh, hobbies. Speaking just, of hobbies. Reading audiobooks yeah. is a hobby. So I, uh, I, a couple weeks ago. No, oh, nice segue. A yeah. segue. It's been a while. Segway. <laughs> you got a tea there. There we go. So uh, a couple of shows ago, you heard me talking about this book. I was reading this by Brandon Sanderson, that big like, fantasy novel. Mistborn. He, uh, he's the author, that same author. I was reading a different book by him. Yard of Kings. King of the King of the Courtyard. Uh, Way of Kings. I'm good. Yard of Kings. I'm pretty good. You're pretty good. Yeah, Considering how like, drunk I was then. And how few things you remember that I normally say. <laughs> this is great. But anyway, so like I'm, I'm reading the second book and I was like, I was at work and I'm, I kind of was doing a mindless task and I was like, ah oh, man, it'd be nice. I really want to know what happened in the book. I want I want to maybe look at the audiobook. Maybe listen to the audiobook for a little bit. So I go online and I'm like, how much did I buy on Amazon? $50. 50 Ooh. 50 wow. It's a big book. More it's like, than it's like, the more than the, the book. Oh, way more than the book. The book's like $12 I've ne- I've on I've never Kindle. seen that. Damn. 
Well, so it's like a 1,300 page book. It's a big book. Sure. But at that point, I just think and I go, who the fuck is buying this full price? Why even sell it for that much? People hate to read. Well, and I mean, I get that you're, uh, you know, probably like as a, you hire somebody to do the, the voice and do the, the work. Yeah, and you're yeah. hiring for a long time for a book that long. Mm-hmm. So you're probably charging proportional to the time. But at, at some point, you've got to go, well, that's ridiculous. Oh, you're not. Because, I mean, audiobooks vary. I bought a couple, a Moby Dick I bought, which yeah. is a very long book. Uh-huh. It was 99 cents. You know what I mean? Like books, it's a lot to do with demand. I think yeah, it's really where it yeah. is. Because it's nothing to do with length. Because mm-hmm. I mean, it is a new book that I was reading. Most I've, I've never, I've never bought a book that costs more than ninety nine cents as an audiobook. No, yeah. and I bought a lot of audiobooks in my life already. Well, so th- then I just started looking at audiobooks, yeah, like prices, and anything that is like a current book, I guess within the last even ten years, I was I was looking at prices twenty, thirty dollars generally, and it's like ugh, fuck, man, like thirty bucks to 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 have somebody read for you. Yeah, it just it seems such a high price. Like, who is paying that money for that? Don't you think that, that those I mean, prices are unrealistic for the? It's way too high in my yeah. mind. The, uh, that's way too high. However, if there's a book I wanted to read, I would, I would never read it. Now it, it almost you seems like I mean? a scam to me to get people to sign up for like the subscription services, like Audible.com mm-hmm. does like subscriptions. You pay like a monthly ten dollars or something, and you get like two free audiobooks a month or something. Any book you want? I think so. Yeah. Sounds good. It is good, but that's the point. Like you know, so that that sounds great, but then like. Why are they charging these crazy prices to me? It almost seems like they're going to push people into this service. So you didn't buy that audiobook? Of course I didn't buy the fucking audiobook. $50? So we're thinking, yeah. how much would you buy it for? 10 You know, it's not really out of line if you compare it to the cost of music for the same time. I mean, if you buy, like, three CDs, that's yeah. 50 bucks. And that's way less well, time than the audiobook. I mean, ain't, ain't nobody buying retail CDs. That's true. But even if you buy the three CDs worth of songs for a dollar each, and, 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 let's you're, take... and you're right. Even mo- and even movies. Let's say yeah. you buy two movies, thirty dollars. It just came out, uh, four hours maybe, five hours of time. But but is it the time I'm getting? Like I, I don't know. Like I just it just seems. Let's think about this yeah. for a second. What do they say? One page per minute when you're writing a script, in screen time. What's a book? Per, like two minutes a page. Let's say. We gotta give it a t- like like entertainment yeah. time. Let's put it that way. All right, let's say two, two minutes. Two minutes a page. page. Yeah, so thirteen hundred pages. Dramatic pauses for effect. So you're saying thirteen hundred pages. Yeah. So twenty six hundred minutes of, of entertainment. Yeah. I'm quoting this entertainment. It's a, you know reading a book. Yeah. So let's say a song is three minutes long, and a song is ninety nine cents. Yeah. How many songs in twenty six hundred? Are you asking minutes? me math right now? You you're the guy. I don't have. Oof, I, boy. So we're uh, looking at <clears throat> how if we many, say that's like. What's 2,600 divided by 3? I, I like, have a calculator. Uh, 2,600 divided by 3. That's where we're at. I don't know. 2,400 divided by 3 would be 800. It's 866. So it's 866 songs worth of length of listening audio. So that would cost $800. About. That would cost a lot. Yeah, so songs. you're getting pretty good value by that for rationale. The t- for the time, but I mean, you know. But compared to a book you buy, <clears throat> which is what you're used to. Maybe that's the, the problem is that I'm, I have that same... Like, so, like, piece of work for a much cheaper price. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the same information. Yeah. And the same. Yeah. And there are other like, if if like Amazon does this thing where I think it's if you buy like the Kindle version or the print version, I can't remember what it is, then the audio book is heavily discounted on a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's nice. It's like so you're telling me right there like I it can get this very cheap. I mean you're the reader is not always the same person as the author. So who's getting that money then? You know what I mean? It, it's like. There's just a gap somewhere. There's some. I feel like I'm not getting the whole picture. Well, I'll, I, I'm. I'll bet 90% sure that the reader just gets paid an hourly rate, and the author gets a royalty, and the company that hired the reader gets the majority of the money. I bet that's how that works. So they just have this crazy choice of how they want to charge, more or less. I don't know. Yeah, the distributor of the book can charge yeah. whatever they want. So if they think the book is a high demand, then they make it a hundred dollars, and they still sell the some. book. Yeah. So you got to think for every one guy that buys it at fifty. Then five guys would need to buy it at ten. You know, they kind of make that distinction and say, okay, maybe it's worth it. You know, but that's interesting. Like I said, I've never yeah. bought one more. Nine and cents all I've ever paid. And never a lot of audiobooks at this point. I think one of the worst bang for your bucks is comic books. Horrible. You're Horrible paying like what? You're paying like eight dollars for like ten pages. Like with uh, no ten words. pages. I, no. More than that? A, well, a, a new like a new Marvel comic. Let's they're pretty say, short. Can be between like four and six dollars a lot of times. Okay. They're about 22, 23 pages. If you're 
you know, a fast reader and most of it's pictures, right? I mean, I mean yeah, there's no word, like, in text, it's yeah, one let's page say you're text, just, I'm, a, I'm a fast reader, so I'm just, okay, read, flip, read, flip. That's, you know, 20, You read a comic book, easily yeah. in 10 minutes, you read a whole comic. And then the thing is, like, the other thing is that not a lot happens per comic book. Like, there's a huge arc, an arc you take six books. It's, it's, yeah, it's so fine. you're, you're not getting anything for that six bucks I feel like that the worst bang for your buck yeah I mean the picture is what you're getting you get the art you yeah know? it's like not mm-hmm. just writing you get like and the I guess drawing, if you're so. if you're a real like if you can really appreciate that art I, I don't know maybe it's just that's what I'm missing is that I appreciate the story and the words more than the art you like do you follow the humble bundle yeah they yeah. sell comics a lot now yeah I look at those I've gotten actually I buy a, I pay I buy all of them I pay yeah. one dollar and get all of them just because I might somebody want to read them for yeah. a buck you're and I've read it yeah, they great value. I read, yeah, I read um, Jungle but, Girl. But the way they do it is they give you like the first issue of a bunch of them. Sometimes. Yeah. You get it in a print? You get a PDF version. PDF, yeah. okay. No, some of them they have full sets. Yeah? Like they, they had the full Watchmen. Oh. Hmm. And they had, um yeah, there's some that are just one piece. They had like a tri- like a trip tri- three series set. Yeah. Which are like some upstart comic guys. But like the art is always awesome. That's you why know, I think comics is a perfect subscription service. Like the Marvel Unlimited is the best deal, I think. For ten, like ten bucks. You get access to every Marvel comic from six months ago back to the history. Didn't you do this? You got some... Didn't you do some comic subscription service? No, I just did... I bought them from the Humble Bundle. Yeah, I, I do. Weren't you talking about some subscription thing you did for comics? This I is This so. is the one I know Maybe Yuri of. did. Yuri talked yeah. about it. Okay. Because I, I use it. I think it's great. I, I, I cancel it every now and then and I go back to it because I'm like, oh, I don't have time this month or I'm not interested. You know, I go through phases. But that's another great thing. I can just... I can pay 10 bucks and read a month worth of unlimited Marvel comics throughout their entire history and like there I go if I wanted to just buy those issues I get three issues for ten bucks you know what's interesting about this what is let's say their issues were very reasonably priced mm-hmm. nine, 99 cents each instead of three bucks each yeah and that's what you had to go buy per issue yeah you probably would not even use it I bet say it again like if instead of a monthly subscription yeah like how many comics you say you you're off and on every month yeah but over the course of stop Qu- quasi stop this shit <laughs> so my dogs, and my animals. Jesus. So you yeah. are read. Let's say how many comics in a quarter do you read? Do you think? Thirty three, three months. Thirty. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's say see. thirty. Yeah. Let's say you had to pay a dollar each per comic. Mm-hmm. A paper paper read. Yeah. Versus ten dollars a month, which would be the same amount of money, right? Yeah. You'd probably read less comics and use our software less if you had to pay per comic. Yes, I would for sure. Yeah. But in, if anything, I want to get my bang for my buck here. Subscriptions are great. They're the best. They're the best value because yeah. you feel like you're getting a ton of value. Yeah. And if you get ripped off, it's your fault, yep. not theirs. Yep. And then if you, you can binge and get all the value you want, but they don't lose anything. It's an absolute win-win-win for everybody. Subscription services. Hmm. Rather than pay per there's, use. There's a fine... Like I, I think if you're like Netflix, you probably have a, a lower ceiling, but a much higher floor. You know, That's kind of like where I think they're at. You know what I'm saying? In profit, like they're they're probably not going to make as much as if they're just selling movies, like if they're a distributor. But I, you seem confused. Who are you, who? Let's say Netflix is instead of being Netflix, instead of offering the, the subscription service, they're they're Best Buy. Okay, like a pay per view. They're like a pay per view. Pay per view. Yeah. And so instead of buying per movie, you know, it's like a rental service, like Amazon, you can rent movies from before they had their Amazon Video also. You can just rent movies, right? You just rent on-demand streaming movies, and it's like two bucks per movie. Mm-hmm. Well, you might get a lot more money if a million people rent two movies, you know, or two-dollar movies. But you might also make a lot less. There's a there's a higher risk if people just stop using it or don't use it. Yeah, well, people are much less likely to buy something. Yeah, like everybody. Once. How many people do you know who don't have Netflix? Very few. Almost everybody every, has. In it. fact, it's almost weird when somebody's like, I'm like "Oh, you should watch this it. on Netflix." You don't have it. I don't have it. You're a weird fucking guy. Oh, what are you doing? Not having yeah. Netflix, man. Why not? What do you spend those ten dollars on? Get her done. It's only eight. Jesus Christ, you're embarrassing right now. Right now. You know why don't you? <laughs> why don't you go? Just why leave. don't you go? Just leave. I used to have it. I used to have it back when they when they good save didn't even have the streaming. It was just the DVD. I had it back when they just mail you DVDs. That before that's they had that's Netflix. Yeah, they started uh-huh. as a DVD. They started just oh, like GameFly. Yeah. Oh yeah, they started. Yeah, they that was mailed. So they took they took the whole online thing. They yeah. They, they used they to do both, out, yeah. and now. I do think they, they, they still have it, but yeah, it's like they still do, I think. it's weirdly oh, segmented. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, that, so that was a bit of a, a tangent there, I guess. But it just I don't know. I think value, value of the media is value very media. We talk about this a, a little bit in different contexts. It's, it's going down in value all the time because yeah. it's getting so much easier to distribute. 
So, I, but yeah, audiobooks one we hadn't talked about, and I was just very blown away by by that because mm-hmm. to me it's not fourteen hundred page. I don't look and I go, oh, this is a fourteen hundred page book. I go, this is a book. This is one book. It's one, a book. Yeah, it's one story. Yeah, exactly. I don't care how long the story is. Like I don't like a movie doesn't cost more if it's a three hour movie. It goes exactly. It goes back to the to the same idea of yeah. so why are audiobooks charging more because it's longer or I, don't know. I think it's because it's hot. That's why it's not because it's long. But but it because movie dips long as hell. Movies are hot. You know what I mean? Like uh. When a movie comes on, you're, you're right. Yeah. It's weird because they can't charge forty dollars for a movie all the time. Yeah, when the Avengers comes they out, can't do that. they know it's going to be a billionaire movie. So anyway, let's let's get off this. But I, <clears> okay, I say, interesting. interesting. You brought up audiobooks because speaking of audio, mm-hmm. little segue going on here. You're killing it. This is a little thing uh, I have going. Where we were talking at work, me and Adam, we work together. If you don't know that, we do. It's true. Uh, people who are audiophiles, okay, they're obsessed no, with I'll start, audio. Start where you started. How do I? St- you started then. Well, you said you hate listening to classical music because... Oh, okay. So, I hate listening to... Cla- I mean, I like classical music. I'm a fan, okay? But I hate... Li- I-, I like a lot of different classical music. I like piano Bach, okay? Then I like, you know, Flight of the Valkyries. But when I listen to me- classical music on shuffle, I get really frustrated because the range and volume on classical music is ridiculous. And what I mean by that is some songs are incredibly quiet with the quietest violins whispering and the piano is like super... So I have to turn it up to like 10 fucking cubes to hear the piano. Then the next track blows my fucking head up <laughs> because it's some trombone, you know, violin nonsense, which is so loud. I got to turn it down to one bar just to be able to withstand it. Are you it. headphones here? Or headphones, yeah. <clears throat> what kind of headphones? Like nice ones? I don't know. They're fine. No. Yeah. They're headphones. I'm just wondering. That. I mean, it's a fact that classical music has a huge range. I believe you. Yeah, yeah like like even within the song, often they have yeah. one. You know, one song will have a very quiet, you know, violin solo, and then the whole orchestra the will start. It'll be really, really loud. Blow you yeah. away. So I get really pissed. I wish they could normalize the the classical, so I can hear everything at, at a volume like four bars, so I can like keep working and not have to like spaz out and adjust the volume constantly. Isn't that the point of like an equalizer, like on Spotify? Or something? No, it's not quite that. The what you want is you want dynamic compression. So it makes the quieter, the quiet's quiet, the quiet's louder, and the loud's quieter. So oh, yeah, it like my, evens everything out. My the pod, the app I actually used to listen to podcasts does that. Yes, yeah. you probably I don't know if you know, but I bet the it does that to the audio automatically for this sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's what gives like FM radio. That's like why F like you listen to a song in a CD versus FM radio. It sounds like a little different. It's because really, they, yeah. they compress it. I don't know. It's it's a little subtle, but a lot of people hate this. They call it the. Uh, they right. hate FM. They hate dynamic they compression. Hate, well, they hate how music has changed over the decades. Where now, if you actually look at the waveform of the song, everything is right at the top and bottom. Like it's as loud as it can possibly get, and everything is equalized. So the quiets are like actually quite loud, and the louds are about the same. In the past, there was more dynamic range in a song, mm-hmm. so you'd have the problem. You could look at it as a problem that you have to keep on adjusting your volume, but or you could look at it as a intended. feature. Yeah, a feature of sometimes the song's quiet and sometimes it's loud. And so. Is that because of the way we listen to music now? <clears throat> I think it's because... I think yeah, that's probably, part yes. of it. And also because people don't like doing that. If you listen to it on your laptop or on your on yeah. your headphones at work or in your car, for one. Like, you can't... A lot of classical music you can't listen to in your car because, like, it's just way too quiet. And, like, you I just mean, can't when, even listen to when it. When classical music was written, it was written for a performance. For a live audience. Yeah. It was yeah. on radio back yeah. then. Yeah. And those so, things weren't a problem because yeah, exactly. you're in a silent, giant auditorium. Yeah. So then this segued into mm-hmm. people who are, get pissed about compression. And then we were talking generally about like audiophile people who are mm-hmm. obsessed with uh, you know, good sound quality. <clears throat> and I said, these guys are, are like germaphobes. They're, they're parallel to germaphobes. And here's what I'm saying by this. We know, you know Mark Summers? Uh, double Dare 2000. Double Dare. Double, sorry, just Double Dare. He's a, he's a, he's a germaphobe. I, I, Which yeah. is very ironic because he's dealing with slime all the time and like mm-hmm. pie pie filling and whipped cream. Yeah, he's like getting slime. Yeah, he's, he's getting like he's really next to a this, bunch of messy shit. But he never gets slimed. Does no, he? not not intentionally. But like he's around it a lot. So he must. <laughs> it must be really an- anxious for him. Hold on, a little bit of a segue here, but you, or not segue, but in- interlude here. Did you ever watch um, like C C two K? It was like the the precursor of Jackass. You know what I'm talking about? No, there was, no, it was like a lot. C- CK can't kill yourself. CKY. CKY. Right? CKY. Yeah, yeah. yeah. CKY. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. CKY. I have an idea yeah. What you're yeah, yeah. And there was one where this this guy like hates mustard. 
He's like a mustard phone. Yeah, yeah, I know the guy. And they cover him in mustard. Like, Come on, yeah, yeah. He has a really hard time. And his reaction is just like terrifying to he watch. He is really doesn't like that. Yeah, like that just I can't imagine like him working in a mustard factory. I mean, that's well, basically what Mark Summers is doing. Works, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mark, and Howie Mandel, another popular comedian who's a germaphobe. And they, I've seen documentaries where they have to wash their hands constantly. And, yeah. So they're afraid of germs all the time. And every time they touch anything, they got to be conscious of the fact that there's germs on that. And how are they going to deal with the germs on their remote control? On the phone, on the glass, you know, I can take your glass right now and drink out of it, right. and I wouldn't care. Yeah, I mean, the the, the difference here, or well, they're not the difference, but the thing, because these guys aren't crazy because the germs are real. There are germs on your glass and on the phone, and they really exist. The thing is, they don't bother me though. Like I don't. It's not that I don't know they're there. I just don't care. Like, it doesn't enter my mind. But for these guys, it enters the mind constantly. That's what audio files are like. They, they hear a song, and I can hear it. Like, if you give me a song that's, that's flack lossless, whatever that means, yeah. and you give me a song that's 92 kbps, I'll listen to both. Very well, I might not be able to tell. And if I can tell, I wouldn't even care. Like, you give me a 92 kbps song, and I'll listen to that album. I'll be fine. But these, like, audio dudes, they can't handle that. These are the guys that are spending $600 on headphones, and, like, they're, they have to have a lossless version of every yeah. track ever. They love vinyl. These guys are they're, – they're sick about it. My mom's, my mom's boyfriend's like that. Yeah, he'll only listen to that shit. Well, I mean, he, like I – don't, I don't think he's an, to that extent, but he appreciates good audio. Like, he, he builds speakers in his basement. He, like, sell, he sells them. It's like builds kind of, them. He builds them and sells them. Like, he'll buy, wow. like, like a, a tuner that's broken and fix it nice. and then sell it. But a lot of times Sweet. if he buys, like, a really good one for, like, a good – Price so just keep and he'll fix it and he'll be like, "Oh, the sounds amazing!" He'll bring me down. He's like, "Look at these speakers I built." Can you, can you hear the sound? I can hear that it sounds good and cool, but mm-hmm. like I don't think I hear what he hears. Right, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's not that, that what he hears is real. Yeah. But it's just to you, it's not important enough to, to to register on your like on your level of oh, oh, this is something I care about. So that's what that's kind of where I'm com- where I'm saying with this. I wanted to buy a nice pair of headphones for all, so I bought these. That everybody like the reviews were amazing. How much? Uh, they were like 120, I think, when I bought them. Okay. They were heavily discounted, but they're the Audio Technica like 50s or something. I think they're called. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, oh, they're the best. You can hear the full range of sound. The highs are high. The mids are Whoa. mid. The lows are low. Gotta get that full range. And I'm like, okay, cool, cool. And so like I I put them on. I start listening to a bunch of songs. And I'm like. They're good. They're good. Yeah, I just like, am I hearing extra stuff? What am I missing? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, is that a high one? Is that a mid one? I can't tell. Like, yeah, man. I, I don't know. I know. I, yeah. I've never spent more than thirty dollars in a pair of headphones yeah. in my whole life, and I've never been disappointed with any headphones I've ever bought. You know. And then, yeah. meanwhile, one of my coworkers, he was telling me about a six hundred dollar pair of headphones he bought. He's like, yeah. you know, they're pretty great. I'm like, pretty great <laughs> for six hundred dollars. They better give me a hand job while I listen to my classical music. I I think the headphones I bought are worth the price I bought them for. I do think that like they're really nice headphones. Yeah, I but, mean, there's some more like the how much yeah, press yeah. and whatever. But I, I don't think I get a bang for my buck out of it as much as these auto. Now you're a musician type. What do you think about this whole thing? I think mm, to a point, it makes sense. I think uh, it gets really extreme to the point where I think people waste a lot of money on things that uh, really don't actually increase the sound now, quality at all. Now I have a question: Is it a gift or a curse? No, that's a great question. <clears throat> I would say it's definitely a curse. Definitely a curse. I guess it depends. Ugh. And being too obsessed with it, with something, I think, is a curse most now, of the time. Yes. Now, let me put it to a different sense. People who are very sensitive palates, when they eat food, certain food <clears throat> is amazing to them. You know, they can taste everything. They can taste the way wine, they combine. Wine tasters are like yeah, that. Yeah, they can tell where it's from. But they probably have the same problem. They can't eat anything that's not You're right. the highest quality. So this is probably the same thing an audiophile goes through, but, you know, just different senses. Flipping this up, what you're yeah. saying. If you if you said to me now, Krasny, do you want to have the palate of like one of these palate freaks? Yeah. I would say no. That would be a curse to me. Yeah. Because all of a sudden all my cooking will taste like shit. <laughs> all the food I eat will like I wouldn't be satisfied ever. Yeah. And the same way now, now reverse that. This is to, this mm-hmm. is Mark Summers documentary. I saw mm-hmm. it. I remember this very vividly because this made me think so hard wouldn't happen. He said, you know, you have this problem with germs, and he's washing his hands like fucking constantly. And they say if they could give you a drug. Or like a pill, one-time pill that would cure you of this. You wouldn't. You'd be like everybody else. Would you take that pill? He said, absolutely not. He wouldn't take it because he can't. Like he needs to know there's germs everywhere. Yeah, he's he's gonna wash them off his thing. hands. And I bet if you like tell audiophile like, hey, how about we take this pill? And you just won't care anymore. Yeah, they'll never take it. Well, I mean, that'd be just light a firecracker right next to their ear. It's that, the idea that, that would probably well, take that might make you. That might. Well, yeah, sure. You don't want to be dead. Not, 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 yeah, not risky. It's the idea that ignorance is bliss. Almost. 
levels. You know, like we're ignorant of these higher. It is. It's exactly that idea. And once you do know, you can't go back anymore. Because yeah. Is there it's too any, late. is there anything you would want a more refined palette for? I mean, it, it's almost like it's just super senses. Or, or sorry, you're sticking you're stick with palate? Yeah, not senses. Well, no, yeah, any yeah. sense. Any okay. sense. Well, not senses. Taste, taste you, smell, anything. You want better eyesight, period. Would you? What if it, like, bug you? I mean, what if you look at a fluorescent light that, like, makes you want to puke or that's, something? That's a hard one to describe. I don't think it'd be, like... <clears throat> Let's keep it to, like, not senses. S- smells, tastes, like... Like, being audio. an audiophile, being a, being a really, like, aficionado of food. Let's, let's say sound, food... Um, sexual no? sexual pleasure. <laughs> just that suck. <laughs> that would be the worst. You increase it, you're yeah. like, ah, oh, sorry, it's just, not just never for good me. enough for you. <laughs> I say what happened to like, you? Like very detail oriented. Like like I, I was re- I'm actually reading a book right now about this. Uh, it's written from the point of view of an, a kid who's autistic, and he kind of like he'll go through like certain areas where he's describing what it's like to be autistic, and I, there's the one scene where he goes, going to a new place for me is very stressful <clears> because I notice <throat> everything. And what I mean by that is like I walk into a root, like people walk into let's say a field and they see a cow, a fence, green grass, sky. And that's like, they're like, oh, what a nice field. He's like, when I go in, I notice there are seven cows here. This cow has this pattern, this cow has this pattern. This fence has this marking here. Like, he notices everything. Mm. So like for him, eyesight and I guess memory kind of with that yeah. is that sense. So like he's very, he can remember things very vividly and de- recall details from a room he enters by just seeing it. But that that's that problem mm-hmm. is in that when he, he gets overloaded when he sees like a new area that he's not comfortable with i would like a smell a really crazy smell ability Oof, really? that'd be the like worst Ugh, everything would stink worst. to you i don't think it would stink you know things could still smell you'd good be the, you'd be you the would bitchy just, old women of my work you'd be able to everything i mean i wouldn't you know yeah. uh, maybe i don't know maybe i would i'm not saying i wouldn't but mm-hmm. it, i think that would be the best because it would you could perceive things other people couldn't and get like forewarning or or you know, sense things other people can't sense you can in a way that's helpful. You, you can you. smell that somebody's about to fart. I can smell the farts beforehand. <laughs> I can smell which women are in heat. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you, you be daredevil. Yeah. 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 You already have an uh, enhanced sense of the head size of people. Yeah, I have. <laughs> is this a skill? I have a special skill. He's really, good at, he's really good at knowing if people have a larger than average or smaller than average head. <laughs> really? I can't identify yeah, I can't even. I, I just see like right through boss. that shit. But he's like, ah, a giant head. <laughs> yeah, and then I look at him like, yeah, you're right. They like, the big head? <laughs> usually, you used to always describe people like, oh, like, like, big head? And then <laughs> I look at him like, yeah, little, you're right. They do have a big head. Little head, Tom? That's amazing. I think I would like the palette one. I think you I would want to just... It would make everything taste I, bad. I would not. I don't... I would not. I don't know. And I, I think it would it, make you a better cook. It would make me a better cook. I think I would... I think only good things can come from like... <clears throat> ha- like here's the thing. Yeah, so a lot of things would taste like shit, but then I would just stop eating shit. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like right now I can go to McDonald's and get a burger and probably be okay. But if I, if I knew that that... If I could taste just how bullshit that was, and just mm. really like feel it, it made me bad. you know, like I, I don't know, like, yeah, curse. I would hate that. It yeah. would definitely make life more difficult. You wouldn't be able to go out enough places. You would end up liking way less. And you'd stuff. be a real negative prick. Too. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, this is bad. Everything would be bad to you. You'd be a fucking <laughs> asshole. Have That's you seen Ratatouille? Happen. No, I can't stop thinking of Ratatouille. No, I haven't. Either you seen it? There's like the, the food critic, and he's like, the guy's like, you're very skinny for a food critic. He's like, That's because if I don't like it, I spit it out. You know, he's like, I don't need anything that I don't like. And he's nice. like super <laughs> picky. Okay. Like, that's what it'd be like. You just, you it know, would be like that, yeah. You'd, yeah. Be a, you'd be the douche. You'd be the guy who's like, everybody's like, oh, bring this fucking prick. He's going to no. shit all over everything. I, it, I think it's weird. It's like, I want it. But then I do think it's a curse in a lot of ways. Yeah. It would be a curse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, okay. Should we go to picks? I kind of feel we should go to picks. Yeah. We, have you already time in us? Yeah, well, we should go to picks. But we, we have yeah. a lot of picks is all. Yeah. All right, we'll go to picks. Yeah. We'll go to picks. Yeah. We'll go to picks. So I'll start. How about I start? Should yeah, I start? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. Now you're, uh, you said something last week that kind of – not a pick. You just said it in, in talking about Spotify and Pandora or whatever. You mentioned this 8-tracks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since then, I've been checking it out. I really like it. It's really cool. I really like it a lot. Yeah. And it's – so what it is, it's in the lines of Spotify, Pandora, and RDO. It's a free music streaming service. But the difference here is you, all the playlists are curated by human beings. So you look up a, a keyword like hip hop or you know synth wave in my case, and you get playlists made by people that are synth wave playlists, and then you can you know listen to those. And there's very few commercials. Yeah. There's like no ads. The the keywords too are like really 
interesting. Like, let's say I, I can go, I go hip hop, but let's say I want some, I'm chilling, I want to chill. I go hip hop chill. Yeah, and you get and those I got, I get a bunch of, Yeah, like playlists like that. So you get the genre and the mood, which I think is pretty rare. Mm-hmm. You know, want to hear a great keyword I found? What? One keyword. Mm-hmm. Intelligent Aqua Jungle. Wow. How about that? That's pretty great. For a genre. Isn't that two words? It's three words, but, but it's, it's like, one keyword, like one genre of music. He didn't have to hit, like you can hit oh. two. Intelligent mm-hmm. Aqua Jungle. What do any of those mean? Uh, well, it's like a funk. <laughs> a lot of drums, yeah. no words, um, a lot of like weird techno sounds, I, and you're and you, a really long track. You already listened to pretty, I guess, weird shit. Uh, yeah, like like stuff that wouldn't be well well known. Yeah, but I feel like the thing I like about that, I can go to a playlist and I'll always hear like new artists that I like or like new songs I've never heard before. It's really cool. It's they do a great job of making those playlists. And compared to like an algorithm, which goes, okay, well he likes this artist, so you must like every song by that yeah. artist. Yeah, it's a human being saying you like this song. Here's like a playlist based on songs that fit. Pretty it, much, it's yeah. a very different. You know, it, it feels different. And the playlists aren't like Spotify playlists where they're like 600 songs. No, mm-hmm. they're like they're like 10 to 20 songs. They're a CD. Yeah. It's it, like somebody burned you a mixtape. It's like, yo, dude, you gotta like, you like this? Just you like listen that. to this mixtape. It's awesome. Yeah. So it's free. I mean, just try it out. Don't you know? Just put go to eight track eight number eight tracks. It's an app on the phone. It's also a web a website. Yeah. Go there, check it out. It's it's money. I'm glad you used it. I'm glad you liked it. I thought I, it, yeah. I like it a lot. That's awesome. Uh, this is you. I'm guessing hardcore history podcast. No, it's actually, actually that's, that's me. It's you. Yeah. yeah so yeah. Yeah. this is still me, and this is I. I really want Malone to get into this. You mm-hmm. need to get into this. I shit. I went to the website. Today, to check look it at out. It. I didn't actually listen to it yet. But. So this is okay. So Joe Rogan got me turned on in this. He's mm-hmm. always pumping this guy. And I listened. This is about two year a year ago. I listened to this uh, George Carlin is the guy's name. George yeah. Carlin. Yeah. Not the, not the comedian. Is that what I'm saying? George Carlin. No. George Carlin is, George a Carlin is a comedian. Not George Carlin. Yeah. It's something else. Carlin. <laughs> it's not. That's where I go to. No. It's Carlin something. But he's like a historian, and he has this podcast. <laughs> it's not George Carlin. <laughs> it's something else. Carlin. Anyway. He has a podcast where he talks about history, and he's super in depth and very entertaining. I think I've heard some other people, other podcasts, talk about this podcast. Probably have because yeah. it's so good. And my big connection here is I listen to nine hours of this guy's podcasting, the history of the Mongolian Empire. Do they come out like once a month, pretty much? I don't know. Okay, yeah. I binge it. Yeah. So he did a Genghis Khan episode, and mm-hmm. I, lo- I, lo- I read everything about Genghis Khan. Oh, read. I listened to the whole yeah. Genghis. It's nine hours of Genghis Khan history, and it was the best thing I ever like I ever the best education I ever got pretty much and he's great because he gives you a lot of facts from a lot of different sources and he quotes a lot of different historians and he just like has a ton of quotes he pulls in from mm-hmm. the time like when Genghis Khan did this this is the quote you know that somebody said and he's got a lot of context to what he's saying and then he also adds a lot of his own insight as a historian he's saying this is actually the first time this happened in the world and this affected you know this philosophy changed here and he's really great and currently he's uh he just finished i think a world war one uh series which is about nine or ten hours of world war one history and I'm, i just episode one i just finished it and it's just is it called a hardcore history hardcore history i recommend everybody watch the Genghis con one and then get in this world war one one i'm sure it's amazing that's cool and he does a lot of like sometimes he's one-off episodes like mm-hmm. just like a civil war piece but the long ones are really what I'm into. They're just like watching the History Channel <clears throat> for a long ass time. It's when, do you, when do you listen to your podcasts? I drive a lot. I got about an hour commute. Yeah, to work and back. I I love the fact that I have a very short commute. Yeah, but it's weird that sometimes I like resent it because I'm like, man, I would just love to listen. When are you gonna listen to it? Yeah, when I listen, yeah. I, I listen to work sometimes, but it's hard to work and listen to podcasts. Yeah, it depends process. on what I'm doing. Very rarely mm-hmm. can I. You're do... a fucker. You're telling me you can listen to a podcast and still do work. Well, not so much anymore. Like, there's very few tasks I can do. And, like, I can... Like, sometimes when I'm prepping a case, it's a lot of, like, plug and fill and gaps. And then, like, I can do that for about 15 minutes. And then I can stop that and kind of, like, look into it more in depth. There's, like, about 15 minutes of work I can do where I'm just pulling out of, like, a file. I don't know how to describe it. But there, there, listen, there, I there, can't do anything when I listen to a podcast. Yeah, you... I can are drive. You, I can drive. You're really bad at like multitasking, right? Is I that, wouldn't say I'm bad at multitasking, but I definitely can't process like somebody speaking to me. We talked about it. Like, yeah, we like, did. Like my girlfriend Chloe. Like if I if she's on her phone, I will say something to her, and then like 20 seconds later she go, "What?" Yeah, I'm and okay. I, just, I'm I like and I, if somebody does that to me, I really can like do both. You can't do both though. It's bull- You're bullshitting me. You're I, a liar. I, I can I can <clears throat> I can hear what she said, keep reading, and then respond to her question. But I've rem- I've heard what she said. 
it, it wasn't just like silence. Like I've heard it. You know what I mean? I don't. Have, I mean, yeah. I guess she heard you too. She just chose not to process what you said well, at the time. Well, that's the point. It's like she didn't. She can't now. She has to ask to have me say it again. I don't have to have her say it. I mean, I, if you can listen to podcasts and do actual work, yeah. then I'm very impressed. Not always. Sometimes I can you do that. No. Yeah, he's lying. Can you can call him a liar. I can. Uh, you guys gotta put me through a test. No, we do I need can, to do a test. I can listen to sports talk radio, and you know, listen to kind of like hear the jokes they say and stuff, and I can still work then. But that's not like there's no if, way, if there's I no information to, like, there. If you I know, it's do, just funny. If things. I need to do analysis, like I need to really analyze and interp- analyze and interpret something in my head, then I can't do it. But if I just like am kind of like doing monotonous work. Well, can you read your book, your Mistborn book? Can you, you know, listen to your book and do your work? And like, you can get your book out of that? I couldn't get the whole, like, I can do it for 15 minutes in certain tasks. There's certain tasks I can do. That's insane. Like there are, sometimes I'm doing like a, like a task that requires me checking things to see if like. But you gotta read something. Yeah. I can't read and listen at the same time. I can't do it. I can't. Bullshit. We're doing a fucking test. Do me We're doing it live on a fucking podcast too. I'm gonna write it up. Figure, figure I'm out how to figure out. Here's what you do. All right, here's a, no, I got it. You listen to a five minute podcast at the same time as you are reading something that takes about five minutes to read. And then you take a multiple choice test that is questions about both things. You gotta prepare for this, I can do it. I'm doing it, you're fucked. Yeah. And then oh, otherwise I'll give you five dollars. <clears throat> all right. There it is. Oh, we knocked it. We knocked it, all right. Uh, <laughs> let's move on to picks here. Slowly do picks. <coughs> well, we're in picks, move on yeah. to the next pick. Pepsi this is okay. So this. Hey, what do you know? Another one of Alex's. Then I put three picks up. That's it. I got two. I got two. Um, this is something interesting. It, it's not new by any means, but it came to my attention just this week. <laughs> oh, you might remember Pepsi rebranded. They. Uh, this is about what? Two thousand six. I don't remember. Pepsi changed their logo to that kind of weird crooked logo. Uh, okay. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. They, they had the straight Pepsi logo with the wave. And they changed it to kind of this crooked the logo. The can is like more bluey now. They got more blue. It's more with the logo, but yeah, yeah. maybe the can changed color. But it's like a there's this like meme that went around at the time where like the the, the new logo looks like a fat yeah, guy, yeah, giant fat guy with yeah. his pants pulled that's down. That's a funny one. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the change. That's the change. <laughs> yeah. So then uh, they got a lot of backlash for that because people thought that was a stupid change, and they spent many millions of dollars. You got to imagine a company like Pepsi. They got to re- every piece of Pepsi memorabilia that exists yeah. had to be redone. All their trucks, all the billboards, all the cans, everything. And, and they paid a big company to do it, obviously, because you, who's going to do Pepsi's brand? A mm-hmm. huge ad agency with a lot, you know. So anyway, this ad agency's branding documentation was leaked, and this happened. This was not recent. This is a lot. I just found okay, it. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to link to it on the site. Please check it out. But I showed it to Adam here. And it's hilariously fucking over the top. It's very in depth, very bizarre, very. They had this shit where they're talking about the golden ratio, which you know the golden <clears> ratio <throat> is something that in branding would make sense, making yeah. a logo. So they okay, I'm with them. Okay, then they have like a timeline of the history of like circles, and they talk all the places circles appeared in history, and then they have the Earth and <clears throat> the magnetic field around the planet as it relates to the Pepsi logo. And then they had how how long a light year is. Well, the spot the there's a there's a big mistake in that part of it that really bothered me. What is it? They said one light year is 186,000 miles per second, which is wrong. They're saying a one light year is a distance and oh speed they, of light. They just mixed up the unit, but I read that and I oh, I just yeah. said this like why it's like for one why is it in there? Why like, is it in what there? the fuck does this have to do with anything along with pretty much everything else in that? Yeah. And they got that that, that bothered me. So it's a diagram yeah. and one diagram is like the known universe. It's like the like, ex- expansion of the universe. Yeah, it's like with a light year have... and like x equals the speed of light and then it says the Pepsi logo and here's like the curve and the curve relates to speed of light somehow. It's <clears throat> it's ridiculous. You got it right there. Is well, that I'm it? just looking at the, the oh, okay. logo. I, have, I I want to make sure I. Have it feels to mm-hmm. me. Here's what it feels like to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is this company who made the design started getting a lot of heat because Pepsi started getting a lot of heat. Yeah. And then they're like, somebody there's like, quick, make a document that explains how we spent twenty million dollars in this rebranding process. And then some interns like, uh, and he got like the the, the magnetic <laughs> forces of the fucking Earth and circle history and it's like the yin yang appears and like the yin yang has this, this in there and the pepsi I logo is like this. oh my god it's insane. i'm looking at it now i guess i didn't remember yeah this is because i didn't logo. think about it. that's the point that's why you know it's bad is because yeah. it's literally just turning the little 
wavy line that's it's 20 million, diagonal. Yeah, twenty million. Twenty million dollars plus the cost of changing all the stuff. So guys, go uh, that. I'm gonna li- the PDF. It's a PDF. It's it's twenty seven pages long and it's absolutely hilarious. I'll like show it to you after, but go to agreeordie.com and click on the podcast link and, and check this out. So those are all my picks. It's very untraditional picks, but I like them. They're cool. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I I watched the other day Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. That's not a new movie at this point. Is it? Uh, it's like over a year. I haven't seen maybe it. Maybe a year. Okay. Maybe not yeah, even. Right. Well, less than a year. But I, I watched Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. It's the second movie. It's really good. Yeah. And I feel like this whole series has no right to be as good as it is. The series starting from the like the new no, no, the remakes the new one the remakes they have no business being good. Well, the the first movie in my like my life really that I I remember the Planet of the Apes movie coming out was that Tim Burton one with Mark Wahlberg. Marky Mark. Yeah. That was so bad. Garbage. Okay. okay. And then they're like, we're gonna rebrand it. And first of all, my biggest issue I think is the name is horrible. Planet of the Apes. Well, that's the thing. It's the first movie is Rise of the Planet of the Apes. The second movie's Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. I can never remember which one's which. It means the same thing, essentially. Right? Like, yeah. why? Is but it's the... a remake of the remake, right? Well, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is is a remake of Rise of the Planet of the Apes. No, 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 no. They're the same. They rebooted the franchise. Like Casino Royale started James Bond, right? Yeah. Okay. They rebooted the franchise. It's it starts before the Planet of the Apes stuff even happens. It's like showing how the planet got to Planet of the Apes. That's the first movie. That's Rise. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. So it. It's modern day, basically. And then they, they start showing what's happening. The new one, the, the sequel, it's a sequel to that movie, is what happened after the events of the first movie. Okay. And now it's like a little bit in the future. Now the apes are smarter and things are happening, progressing. Okay. So it's all happening before like the very first Planet of the Apes movie that you think about, the old one from like the 70s or whatever, uh-huh. with Charles and Heston. Did you ever see that one? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, it was good. I mean, I, it was good for the time, I guess. It's I, hard to watch now. I don't remember it. I, I, like, I, I, like, I watch that. I don't remember I it. I love the Statue of Liberty at the end. That was a good mm-hmm. Goosebumps moment. Spoiler alert, bro. From the 1980. Yeah. <laughs> the 1980 uh, movie. But like, yeah. So anyway, but it's it's confusing. Like to, even when I, I had to explain to you just now, you didn't know. But it's re- I re- didn't re- see the new one, so I don't know where it is. But yeah. But it's, it's the, it's so the you, second movie of this new re- So re- you're seeing the series is good. It's really, really, but really good. But the first movie's bad. No, first movie's really good, too. You said it was bad. I'm the, no, he said the Mark the Walt, Mark Wahlberg all right, one. All right, hold on. Let me give you the timeline. Yeah. There were like seven. <clears throat> there were like seven <clears throat> movies. Let's say like like the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. There were seven yeah, Ori- original ones. Original like old ones. 70s from like the there were seven of them. There were a bunch. There were like four or five at least. There were like a bunch of sequels. You only oh, know God, there was fucking one. No, there was a couple. Okay, right. So they had a whole franchise run, and then like that kind of died out, and they tried to reboot it, right, with this Mark Wahlberg Tim Burton movie. It failed. It was a shitty movie. Okay. Then now they're rebooted it again. So now it's a whole new thing again. So what's the series? It's Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. What was Mark Wahlberg's movie? It was just, just Planet, Planet of the Apes. Just Planet of the Apes. So that, was a, that was like a straight remake of the original. There have been oh, yeah. kind three of a run. modern movies. Three d- sets. Three sets of them. There's been three sets of movies. In modern time, like, like our you know young life, there have been... What was the second set? The single Mark Wahlberg one that sucked. Why are you guys calling a set then? Because if it had been good, well, we're just trying to make sure you understand that okay. they're all because, separate. No, because yeah. the ones he's talking about now he likes, they're like another, yet another remake of the yeah. same original thing. Just so like there was a the set Mark of Wahlberg old movies. movies. Yeah. One movie that sucked. Yeah. Forget it. Yep. Now a new set started, which yep. is two movies. Yep. I missed all this shit. <laughs> yeah, apparently. You saw the uh, Mark Wahlberg. I one. saw the Mark Wahlberg yeah. one. I didn't yeah. realize there were two more after it. Yeah, but they're not connected at all. You understand that now? <sighs> now I do. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> the, they're really, really fucking good. the The first one has like James Franco. He works in a lab and he wants to make like animals smarter to kill cure Alzheimer's. So he creates a serum. They're testing on monkeys, and it does work. It's like starts curing Alzheimer's. And it makes but the monkeys then it, super but smart. it also makes the monkeys yeah. super smart. Yeah. The monkeys played by Andy Serkis. The guy like did Gollum. Yeah. You know, and he's like awesome. Like he does a great job with it. Anyway, so that the, that, but it also kind of explains how a Planet of the Apes could really happen. You know, like how like it could become reality in today's society. But it's really, but the emotion is what's great. Like you really connect to this ape character, and like you feel for it. And it's just like there's tension and emotions and feelings, and it's just fantastic. And the next one is like a great dramatic. Um, it, it's like the apes are living now in this society and there's a human society living in this like the r- rubbles of civilization and it's these two kind of societies trying to live together and cooperate but it's a little bit of, it's almost like game theories involved about how you can trust the other person when you don't know what they're doing 
So it's like a very interesting like idea of war, like almost the, the Cold War. Like, how do I trust the other side when I don't? There's not full transparency, you know. And can I ever fully trust them? I don't know, but it's really it's really interesting. They're really good. Basically, I would recommend that you watch them. They're fun action movies. They're, Check them out. Where are they at? They're Netflix? smart. Definitely not on Netflix. You Definitely gotta, not. You gotta find them. You gotta rent them somehow. Fuck they're all that. they're all on Amazon. You know and what? Shit. Fuck that. Well, they're great. So, um, they're on Hulu. Shadowmatic. Yeah, it's an app. That, oh, this is your, yeah, 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 yeah. It's me. There's it, I app on the uh, uh, Apple Store. Apple Store. Apple Store. Yeah. Shadowmatic. It's like a fun little puzzle game where you you move around like little pieces with like a light shining on them and make a shadow, and you move and rotate the pieces to create like a, a real image. So like you might have two weird shaped things, and if you move them the right way, it casts the shadow of a teddy bear. And there's like little hints to help you figure it out. It's a little frustrating because like sometimes you'll make something and be like, that should be a teddy bear. Yeah. You know, you don't know what it's supposed to be, but. It's, it's nice. Not, I looked at it. It looks really good. It's really it pretty. looks amazing. It's really like relaxing to play. Yeah. It's a cool game. How much is it? Three bucks, two ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. Hey, by the way, you watch? We watched John Wick last week. One of my picks. We watched John Wick. Did you like it? I don't remember. Were you drunk? A little. I was pretty drunk last week. Yeah. I don't remember anything. You had about to watch it, it again. <laughs> I have to watch it again. Actually, yeah. I remember I liked the the violence and it was great. Yeah. I don't remember much about the movie. <laughs> I was. I couldn't remember. I was like, yeah, I feel like you didn't say much about it. But then I couldn't. I couldn't remember if you said anything about it. Yeah, I liked it. <laughs> yeah. I remember, okay. I remember having a good feeling about it, but I remember literally nothing. Oh, good. Okay. So that's too bad. All right. Well, I guess you'll have to watch it again. But those are my picks. Adam, you got anything? Yeah, I got two, actually. Um, the picks, man. They're kind of related. My first is a snack tip. Um, if you like snacking, I would recommend uh, freeze-dried fruit. It's like, uh, it's you know, it's got the, it, like they freeze it and they suck all the water out of it. So it ends up being like little chips, but they're like crunchy. Oh, okay, yeah. If you have like cereal with, yeah. with freeze dried strawberries like in banana it. banana chips. Yeah, okay, but, well, well, it depends. So dry, like dehydrated and freeze dried is different. Oh, dehydrated kind of leaves it a little bit full of the moisture still. Uh-huh. But freeze dried, like it's it comes out almost like a chip. It's a, it's a fun texture. It's just the fruit. A lot of them, they don't even add anything. It's just the regular fruit, and like, like it lasts like forever. Yeah. They're very good. Um, they satisfy your kind of crunchiness. They have all the nutrients apparently. Of a strawberry. And they're only anywhere from two to ten times as expensive as a bag of chips. So <laughs> wait, what? Two to ten? <laughs> they're, they're they're expensive. They're not. Uh, they're, they're not as cheap. Slide, yeah. They're not as chi- they're, hey, they're not as cheap as fruit, and they're not as cheap as chips either. But strawberries are expensive. They're yeah. dang tasty though. Um, Where can I get them? You can get them. Not all grocery stores have them. I I got some at uh, a gro- like a Lunds or something, and then I ordered some online, like in kind of in bulk and like a quart, and I just housed them all week. I you had like three containers. I just ate them all. You know who's got the tightest game <clears throat> for like trail mixes and like shit like that? It's Costco, man. Costco's got. Oh yeah. Just, Costco's so fucking. They out. probably yeah, have. They, they probably have a lot. Of- a lot of people like uh, they say like if you go on hikes and stuff, these things are really lightweight and all yeah. the fruit, so a lot of people do that. I don't hike. I just sit around on my couch. And eat them anyways. Well, but, uh, if you're gonna be eating yeah. chips, eat strawberry chips. Yeah. yeah, they're good. My other pick, uh, I'm a big space guy. I'm into space and like what's going on with the probes and the the vehicles and things. And I've been watching. There's a lot on YouTube about the space stuff, but a lot of it's like your standard History Channel, like dramatized kind of quasi documentary that I get kind of bored with. If you really want to get the real space info. Look up whatever mission you're interested in, like even the old stuff, that, like Apollo, and then press conference. Like you can actually watch the press conference after the Apollo 11 astronauts came back to Earth. It's really interesting, and uh, all the modern missions, like there's one going to some asteroids in the asteroid belt called Dawn. There's one that's reaching Pluto later in July this year. That's called New Horizons. So look up like New Horizons press conference. Uh, it's really interesting if you're into the space and the science stuff, and they do a pretty good job of not being too overly technical because it's regular journalists who are usually asking the questions. Um, so if you're into space, check that out. YouTube, whatever space mission, press conference. You remember when the History Channel had history on it? I I, I do remember that. I haven't seen it since it didn't. Yeah, what are they like showing now? U- UFO. It's always just like UFO aliens. Sh- stuff. Oh, always UFO aliens. shit all the time? <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like the pyramids of Egypt. God. Interesting, right? Wouldn't they be more interesting if they were built by aliens? Yeah. yeah. I remember watching like the Civil War like documentaries. No, that shit's and gone, I like that stuff, yeah. yeah. In fact, I think South Park did a, a parody episode of it, being like oh, I bet they would. Yeah. Just that whole idea of how everything's aliens, you know, or some some connection. So those are our picks. Hey, thanks for uh, getting those picks in here, guys. Yeah. Hey, thank you. Thanks for coming to the podcast, Malone. Of course. Everybody loves having you on. They just love you so much. Just obsessed with you. <laughs> they just can't get enough of you. So into you. Such a cute guy. Yeah, what a great guy. I want to hear what I want to hear in the comments. If anyone, anything about me at all, my physical appearance, the way I talk, my viewpoints, 
Whatever. Any any problem you have with me, say it in the comments. I want to hear about it. For real. <laughs> Oh god! Yeah, yeah, especially the mean comments. Yeah, I want the meaner. Yeah, if it had, I want it to be genuine though. I, I mean, not I've, just make I've already up, said but. it, but that's sure it's not doing you any favors. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, just said that. <laughs> thanks so much for watching uh, or listening. Uh, give us a review. There, there are gifts. They haven't been sent yet, but goddamn it, they're coming. Yeah.